In this video, we'll be looking at break-even analysis. This is for IB business management students, and we're following the syllabus to guide us on areas that we'll focus on. Uh, the focus really is going to be more on the mathematical portion and not on actually drawing the diagram. That will be a separate video. So we have these first two major points that will be our focus, and that's looking at the contribution and then looking at these uh, more smaller aspects of the break-even point, these calculations, and understanding how break-even point really can be manipulated by changing the variables. Um, break-even point's really, really important because when you consider the goal of the firm typically is to maximize shareholders' wealth, and when you find out where you can break even, or basically where all of your costs are met, your fixed costs and your variable costs, and you start to make a profit, that is going to be in that direction of maximizing wealth by accumulating profit. Um, it's also really important for uh, your strategy, recognizing competition, and also looking at unit four, looking at marketing, price points, things like that. So this is just the diagram. Again, I won't be focusing on the video, um, on this video with this diagram, but it is good just to kind of recognize and pause and take a look at some different areas that we have for um, our break-even analysis with the diagram. So for us, first thing we look at is contribution. Um, so I have the total contribution versus the per unit contribution. And looking at this, we'll use an example of uh, bicycles. So in our example, we have some data that will be given to you. We have number of bikes sold down here, the sales price. So the sales price is the selling price. This bicycle here sells for $1,000 per bicycle. Then the variable cost per bicycle. So this is going to be all the materials that are used in making this bicycle. That's $650. And then our fixed costs. These are our costs that do not change. The machinery, things like that. And that was $42,000. So this is for that bicycle manufacturer. And in doing this, we can make some simple calculations that basically tell us how much profit or how much contribution are we making when you only consider our variable costs. So for this, our contribution per unit, as shown here, is simply our price, that's our selling price, which is our thousand, minus our variable costs, our average variable costs, which we're saying here is 650. So that thousand minus 650 comes to 350. That means if you only consider those variable costs, all the materials and whatnot that go into that bicycle, we are making $350 for every unit that we sell. However, this is not the same as your total contribution. Your total contribution is looking at this contribution per unit, our 350 times our units sold, and really this is our forecasted or expected units sold. And this is 130 over here. So for that, we then just take 350 times 130, and that will get us 45,500. So that is our total contribution. That's saying, all right, that's the total, basically, uh, profit we're making only when you consider our variable costs. It does not consider our fixed costs. However, looking at this, our fixed costs are 42000 so we know that we will be making more. We will be breaking even and then making a profit if we are able to sell 130 bicycles. The fun thing really is, to me, is looking at all these different variables that we can manipulate and potentially change and recognize how they fit into the greater strategy of the firm. So these are what we're looking at from the IB business learning objectives. These are our AO2 and AO3. For our break-even quantity, or our break-even point, this is just telling you exactly the number of units that you need to sell in order to break even, or in order to have your revenue equal your total variable and your fixed costs. And your variable costs will depend on how many you sell. So for this, our fixed costs we have here are 42,000. So we have that 42,000. And then our contribution per unit was again, the thousand minus the 650. So that's 350. And that there is gonna get us, um, let me see my math. Okay, that will get us 120. 
20 bicycles. So that tells us we need to sell 120 bicycles in order to cover all of our costs, our fixed costs and our variable costs. Looking at our profit, which typically is the aim for the firm, it can depend on the, the strategy, what the firm's trying to do, but assuming that for this particular product we are trying to make a profit, we can recognize, all right, well, how much profit do we actually make on this? Uh, for our total profit, we need to figure out our total revenue, so the units sold, so that's 130, uh, times our selling price, so 650. For this, I would take our expected sales of 130 units and multiply that times 1,000. That's going to be our total revenue. And then from this, I will then subtract our fixed costs, which is 42,000, plus our variable costs, which was 650 times 130. So our total variable costs. So by doing this, I will get the 3,500 that we mentioned earlier. To give us our total profit, if we are able to sell the forecast amount of bicycles, which is 130 bikes, which if you think about that, it's not a large amount of profit, and this could be a concern for the firm. We aren't exactly sure how many we're going over, and that's what we're gonna find out next. So basically, how safe are we if this is a projection that we're making? So based on that projection, we're able to figure out what we consider that margin of safety. At the end of the day, yes, we wanna maximize our wealth, but no matter what, we want to break even. We don't wanna go into a venture where we're going into it to lose money. So for this, we said we're gonna sell 130, but our break-even quantity was 120, so our margin of safety is 10, 10 bicycles. Um, if we feel like this is an optimistic uh, you know, forecast, then that might be a concern for the firm. So this is something that, you know, it is a bit subjective, how are we making this forecast? And at the end of the day, forecasts are typically wrong. So depending where this firm is, what they believe on this bicycle, this might be something where they say the margin of safety is too small, it may not be worth going into. We have that opportunity cost where we might be going into something else, so it's something to consider. We know how many we need to sell to break even. We know our margin of safety. But um, what if we have a specific amount of profit that we are aiming for? So we have this $10,000 is what I'm going to say. We want, um, oh, and that's yeah, supposed to be $10,000 for our target profit. If that is our aim, all you have to think is, well, we make 350 per the uh, per bicycle sold that's how much we make and we said all we had to do is meet our fixed costs to find our break even now all we have to do is add this 10,000 so we take that 42,000 our fixed costs plus our target profit and then divide that all by our contribution per unit which was 350 this will give us 148 point five seven you can't sell 0.57 bicycles so i'm going to say 149 bicycles that's how many bikes we need to sell in order to actually meet that target profit of ten thousand dollars now we can instead let's look at how can we manipulate the price this really goes into the four p's and that marketing mix and looking at price and saying all are we going for a cost plus um, pricing model are we doing price skimming, price leadership? What are we trying to do? What's our aim and our objective? Does that fit into our target market? So now we're saying, you know what? We still plan on selling 130 bikes, but we want to make that 10,000 in profit. How much do we need to sell those bikes for in order to obtain or get to that 10,000 in profit? So all you're doing in this is saying, okay, what's my required profit? plus my total costs. So my required profit was 10,000 plus my total costs. Now to calculate my total costs, I take my fixed costs 
plus my variable cost, which will be my 130 bikes that we're projecting to sell times the variable cost per unit, 650. And so that will then give me my total costs, my profit, my costs, all divided by my quantity produced, 130. So add one more parentheses here. So we've got that in there. So now I find out, you know what? My target price will be 1050 So a $50 increase of selling price would allow us to get that 10000 profit if we assume we can sell 130 bicycles. That's information that we can use as we analyze where we are within the market. Do we feel that our product you know, merits that price? Are we competitive? And that way we can meet our target profit. The variables that we've had, okay, number of bikes sold. Well, that's a projection. That's um, subjective. We are making it forecast. Well, if we play with this number, it's going to change what will happen, our total profit that we could have, maybe that price we could be using it for. Um, our sales price per bicycle. What if we sell it for more? What if we sell it for less? Where does that fit into the strategy of the firm? You know, is this a lost leader of a product? Does that matter? So where can we potentially manipulate the price? And then where I think the bigger things that could happen is, oh, our variable costs. Now for this bicycle, do we want to use better materials? Do we want to use cheaper materials? What are we trying to do? This might affect our brand image. You know, considering this product, where does it fit in with our product portfolio and our target market? So if we increase our available costs and we're unable to increase our price, that's going to be a smaller contribution. We'll have to sell more products in order to break even. Is that something that we're okay with? Um, playing with these variables really gives us that, that kind of strategy. What is our overall goal or overall objective as we are trying to make a profit, but there's different ways that we can go about in doing that. And then fixed costs. I think one thing also interesting with this and the variable costs we would have to assume we would have economies of scale. What if instead of selling 130, we sold 130,000 bicycles? Well, I'm assuming our variable costs would definitely go down, but I also think our fixed costs would go down. But right now, we're not making those assumptions. Ideally, these prices are based on this projection here. When we look at this, I think the, the most interesting thing about this is we think about these changing variables. And if we go back, they can... Um, really make a lot of different, um, I guess, impacts on the firm and affect that break-even point, the margin of safety, where you're making that profit, whatever it fits in with uh, the objectives of the firm. So lastly, again, this will be the, the next step where we try to look at, all right, from a diagram perspective, here's our break-even point, what's going to happen with this, just so we can kind of see where we are um, when you consider all these different variables.